Welcome to the first episode of Celebrity Spotlight Radio. And this is your host, Antonio Sayat. And I hope everybody's well today, and we'll get started. And um, this is a, a show that was done many years ago, and uh, it's very uh, emotional for me because uh, I was the executive producer, and uh, the host uh, to this show was the Twisted Sister drummer, uh, A.J. Pearl, who passed away last year, and it's uh, very heartbreaking to me, and uh, I decided to bring back the show and um, with me as host and make it happen uh, in memory of, of A.J. Pearl. He's a very good friend of mine, and uh, like I said, and to top it all off, the producer, who's also on the show, uh, Shelly Earl happens to have passed away four months afterwards, which is, I find it quite strange. And I never forget in 2008, uh, AJ invited me to uh, Twisted Christmas, and I went to the concert. I was sitting actually on the VIP section, and it was just fantastic. I, I had line of sight of him on stage drumming away and he did this solo for about eight minutes and I was just blown away and and such an amazing individual with such an amazing talent with the, with the drumsticks it just wow it just killed me you know and and his death just got me so upset and I didn't know what to do honestly and and uh, I said you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna do this I'm going to do this. And I decided to do this radio uh, uh, segment and, and, and continue with it um, in memories of, of him and because he, he was such a positive person. And, you know, he died in his sleep on tour. And I, I didn't even know he had, you know, heart disease. That's where a lot of people were saying, and I, I guess the autopsy and... and it's just crazy to me, you know, because he was always always upbeat, and the way you see him perform on stage, drumming away, it's like, I tell you, you have to be in great shape to do that. I mean, I couldn't do it, I'll be honest with you. You know, continue away, banging at those drums, and staying beat the whole time. It's just amazing. Anyway, another good story is um, this interview that I'm about to call. Uh, John Paulson, and uh, just to give you a, a little bit of uh, history behind him, he, he was a man who started in a cafe with one simple idea, and this happened 24 years ago. Uh, Trot Fest, he calls it. And it became actually the largest short film festival ever. I'm talking about this is worldwide. And he has honestly helped so many people, uh, so many directors, so many uh, producers, writers, name it, just because of, of, of these short films. So I want everybody to actually uh, listen to this whole interview. I'm about to call him and uh, you get an idea of what I'm talking about. And then afterwards, you know, we'll discuss it, you, you know, and, and, and I'll give you this way we get a whole good feedback uh, on who he is, um, came from Australia, uh, the short, fe short film festival was created there, and it's just amazing project, what an exciting new film platform uh, for everyone, it's just totally amazing, anyway, I'm about to call him, so stay tuned, and listen up, it's a great conversation, right, and Let's get it on. Here we go. Hi. Hi, can I speak to John Paulson? Yeah, that's me. Sure. Yeah. Okay, how are you? Good, good. Yeah, yeah, I'm expecting you call. All good. Anyway, um... I'm pretty excited by this uh, film festival of yours because, uh, you know, it's it's coming to Brooklyn, and uh, I really didn't know much about your film festival until I started reading it. I know 
that you did it in Bryant Park last year. But what I want to know is how did you go 21 years ago from a cafe in Australia uh -huh. to what it is now? That's what I want to know. Well, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Yeah. Well, listen, that's a big question. I mean, I, I try not to take 21 years answering it because it was pretty much blow by blow. But the reality is, you know, I mean, probably not as basic premise is I, I made a short film. I couldn't afford a cinema to show it to my cast and crew of maybe 10, 15 people. And so I, I asked the local cafe if I could just show it there called the Tropicana Cafe. Right. And where well, a lot of filmmakers hung out and a lot of my friends hung out and, and he said fine, the owner said fine, but he screened it down, two hundred people showed up. You know, the people told their friends and wanted so it was very impromptu. There was nothing you know, there was nothing really designed about it at all. It was really I and then I got up on a chair at the end of it and said, Hey, let's have a film festival, come back here in three months and everybody should make a film and, and to my great surprise so then I said about getting like four television screens to put together with tables and right. and, and so three months later about nine people had made films for it and, and about a thousand people showed up. So it literally just happened from there. It was very organic. I mean I'm a filmmaker by trade if you like. I'm not a I'm not an event guy or a, or a marketing guy or anything. It was, it was all very much about really about making these films and getting them seen by an audience, especially short films. At that time and even to this day, you know, short films, I think, are a completely underrated medium. Um, I mean, people are starting to get it now, obviously, with the internet and mobile and stuff, but there's a whole world of incredible film out there that isn't about an hour, an hour and a half, two hours. It's it's like three minutes that'll bring tears to your eyes and stuff like right. that. So, so I just, you know, it's, it's, and I, meanwhile, I've tried to keep my own career going and, and, and slowly started to build a little sponsorship base and put a staff together and... And so it went like that for maybe 15 years in Australia, and eventually it was 150,000 people on one night, and a live television broadcast national across wow. Australia. So it was like the, Australia's best kept secret, you know. And then we started to get calls from other countries who were interested in doing their own trop fest for their own young film communities. And the first one we did was the Middle East. We do trop fest Arabia now in its fourth year. Um, we do New Zealand, we do Southeast Asia, and uh, as you know, this is our second year in New York. We did Bryant Park last year, we had a capacity crowd of about 10,000 people, and so we decided, you know, we needed a bigger venue, and uh, Prospect Park, here we come. Wow. Well, let me ask you this question. Why Brooklyn? <laughs> well, there's two answers to that. <laughs> One is the more, um, you know, the, the real reason is we need a we need a bigger venue, and I did notice a lot of our audience and a lot of our filmmakers were coming across the bridges and tunnels to from Brooklyn to buy a park last year. Right. And I mean, you know, obviously any, anybody who knows New York, and I've, I've lived here for twelve years, I mean, knows that Brooklyn has become a really interesting place for you know young and not so young, energetic, creative minds who are working. I mean, people a lot of a lot of people have been priced out of Manhattan, frankly, and. Brooklyn's, you know, become the past few years a really interesting place to keep an eye on. I think arguably one of the centers of global, you know, creative energy and creative activity in the, in the world. I mean, I don't think that's a big secret. I mean, there's, there's, there's so many people here now who are making films and, you know, right. artists and musicians. And, and so it was kind of a no-brainer. And obviously the venue was a big part of it. And then at the very personal level, I mean, I lived here. So right. people have been joking that it made my commute a lot easier, which is, which is true, but obviously that's not the only one. Well, I admire, you know what, I admire people like you, because uh, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I, I interviewed Kevin Spacey last year for Trigger Street Productions on his, what he does for Jameson First Shot to help filmmakers. Right, and, right. and he has a mentor that he said to me, which was uh, Jack Lemon, and Jack Lemon taught him uh, told him one day, Kevin, if you ever make it to the top, send the elevator back down. So, what is, is this something that 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 happened to you when you did your short film, and then all of a sudden now that you, you're uh, you know, you're a famous director and you're well known, is this something you want to like give back to filmmakers to try to help them? Is this your way of trying to like Kevin's doing, like he's giving back? 
Is, is probably, that probably probably? I had my Jack Lemmon. I had the guy called Dr. George Miller. He's a very well known Australian director. He made you know everything from Road Warrior, which we call Mad Max, you know, through um, all sorts of amazing films, including Happy Feet and Babe and and other movies. I mean, he, and he was my kind of hero. Still is. Um, I still meet with him once a couple times a year and have lunch and. And so he definitely, I feel like Tropfest is my way of doing in some ways for a lot of young filmmakers that he did for me. And that just gives a bit of encouragement. George has been one of our founding patrons of Tropfest. He was one of the first guys to say to me, literally in year one, when we were all sitting on the sidewalk outside the cafe, <coughs> saying, this is a great idea, you should stick with it. This is incredible for the Australian film industry. So, of course, it's, it's largely about giving back. The reason we have great people coming and judging every year, we've had everybody from, you know, Steve Jackman and Russell Crowe and Nicole Tim and Jeffrey Rush, all the Australian greats. And now others, Liam Strive is our host, obviously, on Saturday night. Bishop Stevens is going to be there. Malcolm Gladwell is going to be there judging. I think it's no big secret that one of the reasons that these people, maybe the main reason these people are involved in Tropics once they understand what it is, is it's an incredible way and, 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 you know, to give back to these young people who are starting out and who we all recognize ourselves in from 20 years ago or 30 years ago, whatever the case may be. So um, it's all about young filmmakers and, and, and I keep going. I mean, I'm just out of my career. Um, I try to keep my eye on the ball with that. Which sometimes it's yeah. always the way it's going. It's well, that, that, that's my next question. How do you find time to juggle your career and at the same time take the time to help others? and continue with this type of festival uh, and make it what it is today, very successful? Well, I mean, the honest answer is a great team. I mean, I have a lot of my focus every day is on my television and film career, directing and producing. Um, but if I guess you could say my moonlighting gig is top first. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, when I'm not working, I'm in the top first office full time. And, you know, I'm, I'm, the truth is I do two jobs full time. I work I put pretty long hours, but I love it. Um, I don't really ever consider top this work. Um, and, I, and I try to put a great team. I mean, we've got five, six, seven top fifths around the world now. Every one of them has got a really rock solid team. So the best in New York, I've been prepping Elementary, which is the show I'm producing here. Um, you know, we're shooting the first episode in London, starting uh, actually in about a week and a half or two weeks. And so I've had my eyes very got firmly focused on that, but I've got a great team, and obviously I've been answering the right emails and phone calls when they come in, um, but also a group of people who know the festival very well and know what I want, and when they don't, they ask me, and, and I mean, if we, you know, we struggle through it, and, and hopefully both um, strides in my life are um, uh, better for it. I mean, I do feel when I watch these films, it's, in, it's great for my filmmaking, just to see these young sure. people with fresh ideas. We don't even know the rules, and therefore I have no fear about breaking them. I mean, it's very exciting to see what these people do with sometimes fifty or hundred dollars and a mobile phone. Sure. Let me ask you a question. You directed Hide and Seek, Seek with uh, Rob De Niro. Did you pick his right. brain because of the Tribeca Film Festival, or oh, yeah. Or, yeah. or did he pick your brain? <laughs> you know, because <laughs> because you know you started first twenty one years ago, basically, but. Uh, well, what happened with that was we, we made this, we were, we were making this movie, and for a couple of reasons we ended up pushing out dates. I didn't mention Tropics, I tend to keep the two separate. Right. You know, we're, we're possible. I hadn't mentioned Tropics at this point, but one day I came to him and I said, listen, you know, because we moved our dates, I can't actually, for the first time in history, I can't show up to this film festival I created, you know, 20, well, at that time I guess 15, 16, 17 years ago, whatever it was. Right. And I said, it meant a lot to me if you would do a video with me, just stand next to me and say, hey, we're well, sorry, John can't be there. So he very kindly agreed to do that. And of course, then he's like, well, what is this film festival? And we did start talking about it. And actually, for a year or two, we did a little programming with Tribeca. Um, we had, you know, we played some proper short films as part of the Tribeca Film Festival. So it sort of started the beginning of something there. And I guess you could say that's a bit of a soft launch of Trump Festival. New York, you know, and then obviously a few years later, we picked it up last year by a talk and did it as a standalone event. Yeah, well, I have a mentor, and you probably know him or know of him because he did an Australian film in 1971 called Wake and Fright. 
and it, 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 it is now an Australian classic. It is one of the two films that ran in the Cannes Film Festival twice. His name is Ted Kotcheff, and Ted has been my mentor for years. I followed him on Special Victims Unit for four seasons, you know? Yeah. As, and uh, the funny thing that you say is he was the founder, uh, one of the co-founders of the Hollywood Film Festival. And right. yeah, and so I, I've been meeting all these people that are involved in that. And you know what? I I am so grateful that you guys do this for filmmakers because, it, you know, there's not a there's not a whole lot of people like you. I'll be honest with you. And uh, oh, that's right, Thank and, you. And I, and you know what? I wish there were more. You know, Sidney Pollack was another mentor of mine, and uh, unfortunately, he 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 passed away. You know, and he was a great help in, in my career and, and Ted and continues with the help in my career. And people like you and Kevin, you know, are just absolutely fantastic. You know, and I... Well, it's really wonderful of you to say. You know, and... Yeah. Uh, well, you, you know, think about it. I mean, um, what I want to know is, has anyone or any people, have you helped uh, any filmmakers? Have any, you know, when they won the competition uh does it oh, yeah. has it gone anywhere um do you know any oh, yeah. let me let me give you a couple of examples sure i mean you know there's frankly there's a laundry list someone did a story last year and discovered that half of the winners of top list australia had gone on to make feature films so i think that's a pretty stunning wow uh, recommendation right there but if you want if you want to talk about that specifically i mean just talk about actors and actors and for a second there's a couple of people that, I mean, obviously some are more well-known than others, but an actor by the name of Sam Wellington, who started in Avatar, obviously the biggest, you know, Sure, wow. Office. Absolutely. Sam won Best Actor at Tropez before really anybody knew who he was, certainly outside of Australia. And, you know, we, we try not to claim Sam, and he's a, he's a talented guy before Tropez and after, but, but I think he would argue, in fact, he came back last year with the president of our jury, um, so again, a sort of full circle kind of way of giving back to Top Fest now. Um, he came back and spoke at Rough Cup, which is our filmmaker seminar, you know, it's bigger. But so here's one example, you know, of, of many. Rebel Wilson, who most people know now, she hosted the MTV Awards recently. She's obviously started yes. in Bridesmaids and other. She, she won Best Actress at Top Fest before anybody knew who she was. Um, the TV show called Wilfred on FX, that started live. As a top best short film. So it's five hundred dollars wow. for one best comedy. Wow. Two thousand and two. Not many people know this in America, they all know it in Australia. And it went on to become an Australian television series and of course the rest of history went on to become a hit series on FX starring Elijah Wood, who incidentally was a judge at Top Fest Australia, I think uh, two thousand and nine or something like that. So yeah, I mean but there's, there's there's endless examples of um directors, writers, producers, actors, others, costume designers, you know, who've used it, and, and this is what we invite them to do, use it as a springboard. Because like, the reality is, Antonio, like, on Saturday night, I just came from the venue, so I'm sort of hyped up about it. But a great weather forecast. We, we're just putting up our screen. If you get a chance, go to our Facebook page, you'll see our photo. I mean, it's massive, this thing. Sure, sure, I <laughs> see. 20,000 people there. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. That's that's just totally amazing how, you know. And most filmmakers will tell you, most short filmmakers, they couldn't in their wildest dream think of an audience of twenty thousand people or more. In the case of Australia, hundred thousand or whatever it is, watching their films live on television and all that. So, you know, we we encourage people to use it as a springboard to get. You know, it's great to be in Tropez. It's great to win Tropez. But for God's sake, have a feature film script in your back pocket. So. You know, that night, so when you're getting all this, like, you know, applause, you've, you, you've got something to, to show for it. You know, you turn around and say, here's my, here's my feature. And that happens every single year without fail. Some of the best people come through this event, I think. And, and I think most people, if you ask any Australian especially, it's changed, the, it's changed the geography of the Australian film industry, this event. You know, and I say that with some humility, I think. I, I, that's just a fact. I mean, it's really changed the way people think about how to find talent in the sale. And, it, right. and, it, and I think it's partially responsible for some of the best talent that's working in Australia right now. Wow. I guess uh, you, you, you're you spreading a message and a lot of people are attracted to that because 
Did you ever? Did you think that it was going to blow up this big uh, uh, when you first Never. started? Be- now, you not know, only did I not think that. Every year, I can't believe it's blown up this big. Right. You know, I never. If you <laughs> asked me three years ago, are we going to be in Prospect Park with this many people and this screen? I'd say you're out of your mind. Yeah. So every wow. year, I'm sort of stunned by it. But certainly in the early days, I had no idea of the sort of momentum and you know shutting down the street and 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 all this good stuff that happened in the early days. Of, it was the first time no traffic had been on that main street where the cafe was is since cars were invented. I mean, literally, like, talk about the people voting with their feet. We literally shut traffic for the first time since automobiles come to Australia. And wow. it, was a, it was a great feeling. So, yeah, I, I had no clue that any of this stuff would happen. You should be, a, you should be you know, very proud of yourself, really. Thank you. You know, yeah, I really I, and I hope, I hope to God... That I I don't know if you've gotten awards for this. Have you have you received any awards for doing you know, this? I, I have I have a, a couple. Yeah, I, once or twice in Australia I've had like mm-hmm. uh, you know they got something earlier this year and a couple other times, but which is always very nice. But listen, I'll be honest with you too. I do it partly because I love it. You know, yeah. I, I'm glad it does so much for filmmakers, but mm. but I also do it because it's just it brings me a lot of joy right. to see. You know, to see the filmmakers, but also to see the crowd. I mean, I guarantee that half the people who come along on Saturday night never really sat down and focused on a short film. They've probably watched ads, they've watched music videos, they've obviously watched feature films and television. But to really sit there and watch 16 in a row, all less than seven minutes, these like mini masterpieces, and go, wow, these people can really tell a story and right. make me laugh or cry, whatever it is. And that, so that makes me feel great, you know, because I feel like there's there's a there's a real value in in storytelling, in period, but also in this very the very specific art to these short stories, and I think they're a lot of fun. And what I say to people is the great thing about sixteen short films is, you know, if you don't like one, there's another one in seven minutes anyway, and, and you've got to come away with, from the night loving three, four, five, maybe more of these films. Right. Is know, that is that why you do it? Is the limit is seven minutes. Is that why you do it? Because you you figure that someone who's very talented enough can tell a story within that that seven minute period. Is, is that yeah, why? Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly right. It's just sort of developed over the years. We've mm-hmm. had seven minutes for as long as I can remember. Almost probably year two, year three. And the reason for it is, you know, obviously there's always been pressure to make it longer. There's been pressure to make it more nights. And I've always said no. It's it's an event more than a festival. It's got to be one night. You're either there or you're not. Right. In terms of the limit, I think, you know, seven minutes sounds short, but it's 14 television commercials yes. in a row. And if you've ever sat down and watched that, I mean, it puts you to sleep. So yeah. <laughs> it really takes the real... And it also, it's also levels of playing field. Someone who's got 50 or $100 or $1,000 can, can, especially with today's technology with mobiles and computers, can pull together a pretty great five-minute film or three-minute or seven-minute film. And we get a lot of films that are entered that cost tens of thousands of dollars too. And we don't care about either way. We just care about the best story and the best storytelling. Wow. Here's the uh, last question. Because I don't want to take too much of your time because I know you were busy. No, but what, what is your future outlook for the festival? What's the future? Well, that's a great question. I mean, I want to consolidate <laughs> what we've done already. I, right. I basically want to end up with about eight full-on global events. Wow. I'd love to live stream them all so that if you're in New York, yeah, you come along and you watch Trump Fest New York. But six weeks later, you're watching Trump Fest Arabia or Trump Fest Australia live stream. Um, so they're connected. Um, you know, I basically want to build in these other territories what, what we've built in Australia pretty successfully, which is like, a, you know, a massive platform for young filmmakers. I have an idea about building a, almost like a studio. Mm-hmm for some of the best Trump Fest filmmakers to come together and be supported and, you know, be given a, a space and the, and, a, and the resources they need to, to tell great stories year-round, so it's not just about a festival. Um, you know, I mean, the sky's the limit with this thing, and I'm sort of making it up as I go along, but that's some of the, that's some of the things that I've been, you know, I've kind of been thinking about for, for some time now. I believe everyone has a destiny, and I think your destiny is... What you're doing right now, absolutely, 
and you're a brilliant you. you're a brilliant filmmaker and I love all your films and definitely uh, what you're doing now in television and uh, Thank I, you. I, I congratulate you and your success and all your compliments and I, I you know compliments and I hope uh, I hope that it, it becomes even more successful than it is now because you know a lot of people come up to me all the time and they ask me you know they don't know how to get their work you know shown and I tell them do a short film they, they don't yeah. realize they everybody has this thing that they have to do a documentary or they have to do a feature film and submit uh, it to a film they don't they don't it's like they forget that you could do a short film you know in two or three days and you keep it shut look at the careers you've seen Bill either through Tropist or outside of Tropist I mean you can make a short film in a couple of days and if it's great it'll go viral on the internet or go to a festival like this one or another one and you could have a feature deal within months or weeks, you know, I mean, just by making one great shot. I've seen it happen many, many times. Right. Um, I get submitted directors a lot of times, and what they submit me is, is they're great short films, and it's, it's, it's easy to see from this. On the one hand, it's much more scalable to make than a feature film. But on the other hand, the people watching it can totally see what your skills are, and, and I think you can give someone great confidence in making something bigger and better. And just by making one great three minutes, four minutes, whatever it is, chops up. Wow. Well, thank you. And it, it was a pleasure speaking to you. And, and, and uh, hopefully one of these days uh, we'll meet. And, uh, That'd be great. I really, really appreciate you taking interest. Yeah, because I, can't wait to read story. Because I love Australians. And I, I, I bonded with the Australian uh, because of, of Ted Koch's film, Wake and Fright. Uh, because he told me so much about, you know, uh, you know the whole history behind that film and how he was a uh, Canadian going maybe. to Australia. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know. So. so anyway, um, sure. yeah, and I'm definitely going to be going, and um, I'll let Emily know. You know. Yeah, I'll, great. I'll, well, come and say hi. I'd love to meet you. Sure, and you you take care and and uh, good luck and. And I wish you the best, and thank you. Thank you. I wish you the best too, Antonio. Thanks for the call. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Bye bye. We're back from uh, that great conversation with John Paulson. This is uh, Celebrity Spotlight Radio, and what a fantastic individual he is! Wow. I tell you, started Tropicana Short Film Festival. You know, that was the original name, you know, in Sydney, Australia. And uh, just a little correction, it's actually 22 years ago. <laughs> you know, it was one year off. But, you know, uh, now TropFest, so it's T-R-O-P-F-E-S-T uh, dot com for more information if you want to see what's going on, what's the next uh, uh, location, um, this individual has helped so many people. And it's a great festival itself because it's outdoors and uh, a lot of people celebrating, you know, live music, entertainment, you know, catering, bars, red carpet arrivals. Uh, it, you know, you have all these great film screenings and then you uh, have uh, an award ceremony. It's just uh, great support. Uh, from the film personalities uh, around the world, and and it's actually a trademark film festival, so you know it's it's global, and uh, it's just you know they always have a fantastic uh, panel of high profile uh, celebrity judges, you know, and and uh, you you got to go to this stuff, you know, it's it's great, it, and all you filmmakers out there that. You, you know that want to become filmmakers or even actors or directors and uh, writers uh, should get involved with this because this is a great opportunity to get your work uh, shown and you know it's less you know, ten, 10 minutes you know of, of film and you know I'll be doing these interviews most likely bi-weekly and all in the memory of AJ Perrell who used to be the host uh, a while back while I was the executive producer I am so happy to bring this back. I will be looking for a co-host, uh, obviously, and I also am the host of Rocket Green Radio, which you can find me on www.rocketgreen.com, which is actually a sustainable show, 
It's only meant for sustainable people and businesses and all that good stuff. And uh, this is actually just for Hollywood people and uh, music, uh, uh, high-end high, high -end celebrities, and uh, even, believe it or not, independent filmmakers that are just uh, trying to get in, and I'll be interviewing if they have a great story. And anyway, you could uh, contact me through uh, my website, www.celebritiespotlightradio.com. And also you can find me on all the social media, Twitter, uh, Facebook with the same name. And soon you'll be hearing me on iTunes and uh, Google Play Music and etc. Uh, about uh, John Paulson and how he mentors a lot of people and how I have mentor also. So it's always a great thing in any business that you're doing. It uh, doesn't have to be just a movie business. It could be any business you do. You always find a mentor and you expand and believe it when you... You know a lot about that person, you give them kudos and you praise them. Uh, a lot of chances they will help you and guide you to the right direction. Uh, so until next week, hopefully, this is Antonio Sayant signing off at Celebrity Spotlight Radio. Until next time, see you later.